Thank you again, Governor DeWine, for joining us here this morning. First of all, I want to start with you have called uh, 2021 a year of recovery for Ohio now that we are into the new year. What do you hope will happen here in Ohio? Is it uh, a lot of it based on the economy and that making a rebound? And how long will it be, do you think, until we get in a, a better position in the Buckeye State? You know, I'm optimistic. I think 2021 is going to be the year of recovery in Ohio as we move away from, from the virus. We're not there yet. The next few months are going to continue to be a struggle. But, you know, we're starting to vaccinate people. And uh, the faster we can vaccinate them, the better. Uh, the vaccination really is the ticket out of this for us. And we just have to continue to vaccinate. At the same time, we're, we're you know, keeping our mask on and, and keeping our distance and trying to hold this, this virus back. I think economically, um, you're going to see Ohio come back. We've got to focus a lot on, on education. So very important to get our kids back in school. We have some kids who have been out of school the, the entire year uh, doing it remotely. Some kids do fine remotely, but there are some who have gotten further, further behind. So uh, March 1 is the date that we hope to have every child back in school. And I think that's a very important thing to do. We've also are going to have to focus on getting some kids caught up uh, and working with our schools in regard to summer school and other ways to, to bring kids back up. that the kids are going to be way behind because they haven't been in the class. Uh, that sounds like something you will focus on. Well, I think it's important. And, you know, many of our schools have been open, uh, but we have some schools that have not been. They've made that decision. And they've told me that if they could get teachers vaccinated and people, staff, vaccinated that it would be more likely that they would be able to open back up and that's why you know why we're trying trying to do this uh, with the vaccine we really really have three different goals uh, they're all very important one is to save lives that's why we started with our nursing homes um, we've got about 85 percent of our nursing homes now we've already covered with the first shot people are going back to give the second shot and then give people who you know, didn't take it the first time, the opportunity to take it. So we've made real, real progress there. Next week, we're opening it up for people 80 years of age, of older. Um, this, this is the group of people in Ohio who have really been hit the hardest, and so we want to protect them. Second thing we've been doing with this vaccine is, uh, you know, giving the shot to our first responders as far as our medical community, people who are working directly with, with COVID patients every day. We've got to protect them. And the third thing we want to do is use the shots to enable us to open schools again. So those are our real, real basic three objectives. Governor, it's pretty well known around the country that the vaccine rollout has not gone as well as planned. The number of vaccines have not been administered. Many of them may be sitting on shelves. Are you frustrated with how things are going in Ohio? What can be done about it? And are we maybe losing lives because this didn't go faster? Well, it never goes fast enough, but uh, you know, we've been running about 70% of the vaccines that we have received, physically received, are actually going in people's arms at any one given time. So that's not horrible, but we should be up to about probably about 85%. Uh, what kind of skews the numbers is that the federal government required us when we started with nursing homes and other kind of care settings, they required us to really assign those doses and bank them up front. So we had 330, 340,000 of these doses that we could not really touch until we started vaccinating people and then we have to draw them out. So requiring us to put that in a bank up front certainly has, has slowed this, this thing down. Are there any signs yet, Governor, that the vaccinations that have been administered are making a difference? The numbers maybe aren't as high as they have been, but they're still above the 21-day average, are they not? Sure, sure. We're, we're pushing 3% of the population in the state that's already received their first dose. Uh, but I think it's too early to, to really see the, the impact of this. Uh, you know, it's trying to measure something that doesn't occur, uh, which is that someone does not get get the virus. But we know that 
protecting people in our nursing homes. We know that protecting people over the age of 65 is the way to cut these deaths down. It's also the way to free up space candidly in, in our hospitals as well. 87% of the people who died in this state who died um, are people who, who are over the age of 65. So that tells us where we have to go to, to cut down on the deaths. Governor, it's a big day in Washington today as the House is meeting as we are speaking right now to possibly vote on the impeachment of President Trump, the second impeachment. With your time that you spent in Congress and in the Senate, are these unbelievable times? Well, what we saw last week uh, was one of the saddest things I've ever seen on, on TV, our, our nation's capital being invaded by a mob uh, of, of people who were violent, making violent attacks on people, violent attacks on the Constitution, violent attacks on our Capitol Police and D.C. Police. So it was a, just a horrible, horrible thing to see. You know, I really would urge the president to make a public statement, uh, to give a speech, and ask all those people who are thinking about going to Washington on the 20th, people who are thinking about doing things at our state capitals around the country, just, just to pull back. Um, they have a constitutional right to demonstrate, but we need to accept the fact that Joe Biden is going to be president of the United States. And we have a peaceful transfer of power, and we have done this for over 200 years. So I think the president forcefully speaking out would send a very strong signal to people who are thinking about going to Washington, thinking about going to Columbus, thinking about going to um, Michigan, any other state capital. And it just is important. So I would urge him to, to do this. Uh, this is not the norm. We don't, we normally, and have for over 200 years, we accept election results. We may not like them. <laughs> I've been on the losing end of, uh, of several campaigns where I've lost. I wasn't happy about it. But we accept this, uh, particularly in regard to the President of the United States and, and a peaceful transfer of power uh, it is something that we do exceedingly well in this country. It is the norm. And I think the president indicating that would be very helpful. Governor, we know that you have supported President Trump throughout his term in office. Do you believe that he should be impeached for potentially firing up this crowd to go to the Capitol and cause this violence? Well, as I have said, the president's remarks that day were not good at all. Uh, he did fire up the crowd. Uh, he basically assembled the crowd to told him to come to Washington, D.C., um, and then fired them up right before they went on towards the Capitol. So that was not good at all. Uh, I think the president has responsibility, um, you know, for, for certainly some of that. Um, whether or not he should be impeached, look, I, I think the, the real question is, how do we pull this country together? And impeachment just seems to me that that is something that does not help us pull the country together. And I think all of us have an obligation. We are very divided in this country today, but particularly public officials have an obligation to do everything we can to pull people together. If you look at you know, our challenges we face, our enemies are not ourselves. They're not Democrats and Republicans. They're, they're, that they're not conservatives, liberals. We're, we shouldn't be fighting among each other. Yes, we should disagree if we disagree on policy. I'm sure, and you know, the, the Biden administration, I'll disagree with some things that they're doing, and I'll speak out and, and, and say that. But we need to remind ourselves that we are Americans first and, and that we come together as a country. What binds us together is our common belief in the Constitution, our common belief in freedom and liberty and the due process of law. And that's what really binds us together. I think it's important to really focus on that. Governor, you have activated 580 National Guard members here in Ohio for potential problems with protests, maybe in Columbus. How concerned are you that something will indeed happen as we get closer to the inauguration, maybe even in a day or two before? Well, I, I'm concerned. We saw what happened in Washington, D.C. Uh, the more we learn about this, the more it looks like a lot of that was planned out. Um, some of the people who carried this out are very violent individuals. 
so yes, I have I have great concern. I think my fellow governors around the state, uh, around the country, have concern as well. So we activated the guard, and you know we're going to do what it takes to protect our state capital, and to you know deal with whatever comes on the twentieth. But again, I think it's important uh, for the president to speak out and say, you know, don't do this. This is not the norm. This is not what we normally do in this country. Whether we like the election results or don't like the election results, we, we, we accept it when it's final and it's now final. We accept it and we move on. And what the norm is, what the norm is, is that when we lose an election or our candidate loses or our cause loses, what do we do? We go, we go back and we figure out, hey, the next time we're going to go win. And here's how we're going to win. That's, that's really what the norm is in, in, in this country. But yeah, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm very, very, very concerned, and we're going to take the appropriate action. Will Ohio be ready if there are violent protests in, in the state? Well, we're going to do everything we can to be ready, absolutely. And, and, and you know, activating the Guard is only, is only part of that. Uh, we'll have members of the National Guard there. We'll have the Highway Patrol. And, you know, we're also working with mayors of other cities. Uh, you know, when we look back at what happened in the summer, um, I listened to the mayors when a mayor told me they needed the National Guard to come into their city. We sent the National Guard into the city. So people have a right to protest. We, we, we always have to say that. We always have to say and we should say that the First Amendment is, uh, you know, is always in place and people have a right to do that. But we would just ask people to, you know, really to be careful. Um, and for those who have any idea of violence, um, you know, we will be prepared. And Governor, getting back to the coronavirus, uh, we have heard that the variant that was uh, making a lot of news and causing problems in the UK was detected in Columbus. Do you feel that that variant is here and what can be done, if anything, to stop that spread? Well, this is just news that I received early this morning uh, that at the Ohio State Wexner Center, uh, they had determined there was a mutation uh, but they're still trying to figure out exactly what that means. So I think it's too early for us to, to leap to any kind of conclusions. But the experts have told me that we can expect the variant in, in the state of Ohio. And I think if there's any, if any of us need any urging uh, or any sense of urgency, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, this is, will be coming at some point to Ohio, um, means that we need to really speed up vaccinations. We, we have to focus on vaccinations. The reality is we don't have enough vaccine. We just got the allocation to, you know, last night for what's coming this week, um, and we'll get those out. But uh, until we get really a heavy stream of the, the vaccinations coming into Ohio, we're going to still not have enough vaccinations to, to cover the people that need to be covered. But Governor, yeah, I know we just have a sense of urgency. Yeah. I apologize. I know we have a couple of minutes left here. Do you have plans to attend the inauguration of our new president? Are you too busy with things going on in Columbus? And in relation to that, do you think there are opportunities for you to work with the new president that can benefit Ohio, whether it be COVID related or getting the economy rolling again? Well, I'm not going to go. This is not a, a usual year. Uh, I think it's important for me as governor of Ohio to stay in, in Ohio. Uh, this is not a normal year. Normally, I would go. Uh, I certainly uh, think it's important that a governor of Ohio uh, work with the president, whether that president is Democrat or whether that president is Republican. I've worked very well uh, with the Trump administration. Uh, I may not always agree with the Biden administration uh, in certain policies, but the things that directly impact the state of Ohio, uh, those are things that, you know, it's important for us to have a good working relationship with the President of the United States, and I intend to do that. And Governor, last question, what message would you have for Toledoans, those here in Northwest Ohio, who have been through such a tough time? The tough times didn't end when the calendar turned to January 1st. Are there brighter days ahead for Ohio and Toledo? Look, I think we're going to come back as a state. I mean, we've tried to really do what we could to help small business. For example, we were the only state, I think, uh, to devote $8 billion, uh, $8 billion to our businesses. This was in money 
coming out of workers' compensation. And that included certainly small businesses, thousands of small businesses all over the state. So we understand uh, that small business has been hurt. We understand particularly uh, some retail, um, our uh, bars, our restaurants. We know that this has been exceedingly tough. And I think our obligation is to keep this virus down. Uh, our ob obligation is to get shots in people's arms just as quickly as we can, to give whatever assistance we can to small business. And I think this year is going to be a better year. It will be a better year. We think it's the, the 2021 is going to be the year of recovery. And, you know, things are going to look a lot better as we move into the summer. We've got a couple, few tough months ahead, but we're going to, things are going to get better. All right. We certainly hope that does happen. Governor, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Good to see you again.